All right, hello everyone. This will be a bit of a short and impromptu video detailing my journey and results into calculating the RTR or the real trans rate of Norway. Uh, this might not seem too significant at first, but I had some fun with it and I hope that my fellow Nords can appreciate the numbers that I found and maybe remember them in the back of their head whenever, you know, trans issues make make their way into the headlines or into the media in other ways. So this video is, is based directly on the work of academic agents. Um, I'm not sure if it was a day or so before I'll be posting this, maybe two, depends on the workflow. Uh, he put up a video called The Real Trans Rate, which details the formula for calculating a rate of transgender peoples in uh, your country. He used it specifically for the UK. And of course, ever the Austrian economist, he claims to look at the revealed preference, um, any quote-unquote hard data that he's able to find, and not the stated preference of, uh, of transgenders in the UK, in order to arrive at a number of uh, people that should better reflect reality, I think. And not the weird online world we live in. So, this video is basically me doing the same, uh, but detailing my journey a little bit more. Uh, so, and who knows, maybe I can inspire you to do the same for your country, and maybe you'll, you'll have something to go off of. So finally, before I start, um, it's been <laughs> quite a few years since I took any statistics classes or any economics, so I tried to follow A's formula to the letter, uh, and otherwise I'll try to approach this, you know, with a bit of a, a layman attitude. So let's start by talking a bit about how I found some data. Uh, it turns out figuring this out was a bit harder than I thought. Uh, the, the UK must have a much better statistical overview of their transgender population than Norway. Um, and, and when trying to look for any hard data, it seems that most bureaus and organizations didn't really pay much attention to this transgender issue until, well, 2011 and onward. And even then, uh, there are many years of sort of just uh, quote-unquote education or information spreading, etc. Uh, it's not any real hard work on it. So, <clears throat> from uh, what data I have been able to scrounge, as the picture shows here, the best I can found, find is going back to 2011. So the first part of call was... <laughs> where you usually go in Norway whenever you wonder about something and you want statistics on it, on it which is uh, Statistics Norway, uh, or directly translated, the Central Bureau of Trans... Uh, tra sorry, the Central Bureau of Statistics. This is the official arm of the government for collecting and presenting any data and statistics about Norway, about people who live in here. Uh, you can see it's GDP per capita. Uh, yearly earnings, consumer price index, etc., etc., uh, and they regularly publish reports on all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> but surprisingly, I found little to no data on the number of transgender people in Norway. I did find smaller research undertakings that included gender identity as part of the questionnaire, uh, but the best I could find was stated preference, uh, saying that, you know, these people answered in this questionnaire uh, that they were uh, something other than uh, gay or lesbian or heterosexual, of course. So the other studies that I could find tended a lot of times to refer to links that no longer existed or were dead. So a lot of this seemed quite hard to study deeply. So I, I pretty much just went searching for anything I could find, anything at all that was sort of from a Norwegian source. source. So this led me to an article on the website of the Directorate for Children, Youth and Family Affairs in Norway. Uh, for you Norwegians, it is called Buff Deer. Uh, this article claimed to present an overview of how many people in Norway are LGBT+. But even this article 
struggle to provide any sufficient overview of transgender uh, population in Norway. They seem content to base their estimate on other studies performed in Belgium and the Netherlands, uh, which puts their number at uh, somewhere between 2% and 5% of the population. And you can see in the quote here, it says, uh, I've translated this, based on estimates in other studies abroad, the amount of transgender peoples in Norway would vary anywhere between 200,000 and 260,000 persons when combining both gender dysphoria and gender ambivalence. So this is people who have reported, um, I presume, uh, any sort of gender ambivalence, not full-on gender dysphoria. Um, although I'll admit I'm not quite sure where the line is drawn here. Uh, so 260k, 260,000, that is somewhere between 45 and 5% of the population, which matches the numbers from the Netherlands, but it still seems quite high. <clears throat> I do not believe that the amount of transgenders are 5% of the population. So, uh, the other, so this is the stated preference I could find. Uh, and they included a graph which called back to that study I mentioned earlier from the Central Bureau of Statistics, uh, so which it was the only other source I could find. So it's nice we have some sort of circular references going on here. Uh, <clears throat> so in this, it's 2.7% uh, of a total of 17,414 persons stated that their sexual orientation was other. Um, so the government is... I assume, operating on the assumption that the amount of transgender peoples in Norway are somewhere between 2.7% and 5%. But we're not here for stated preferences and questionnaires, we're here for the revealed preference, and we're going to use the real trans, relate, tre real trans rate formula that was uh, given to us by academic agent, which takes the uh, referral rate, uh, the surgery rate, and the certificate rate. <clears throat> so, uh, the concept is to look at data points that are more difficult or require a more serious investment in order to get closer to the actual revealed preference on this issue. Uh, the problem is that this data is quite hard to find. <laughs> but I did manage to get to something and I did have to, you know, massage some data in, in Excel for quite a while because this is not uh, sort of readily presented data anywhere. So I'm going to take you through the steps together. Uh, and we can try to find the real trans rate of Norway. So there are no uh, official collected statistics for any referral rates or surgeries in Norway, uh, but that doesn't mean that the data doesn't exist and hasn't been part of the public view or has been part of the debate, uh, because there's a department of uh, Oslo University Hospital that's translated to the National Treatment Service for Gender Incongruence. Um, incongruence? Not sure. Anyway, this department has uh, and has to make yearly reports to the uh, Superior Department of Health, which uh, includes a lot of the hard data that we are looking for. So what I've done is I've gone through all of their reports and collected all of the data that was in those reports in order to get, uh, get to some of this uh, hard data. So let's tackle referral rate first. So referral rate is a representation of the number of people who have been referred to this department per 1,000 citizens. So uh, the idea is that you have to go to your doctor, you have to tell them that, you know, I feel like a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa. And if the doctor believes you sufficiently, they <clears throat> will um, refer you to this department, uh, which then means you become part of that statistic. Um, let me see, is there anything else? Well, there is uh, the case that, of course, this has uh, increased as the years go on. It seems to be a bit of a correlation between uh, an increase in budget in order to be able to inform doctors that this is a possibility, that they can actually refer people to this place. And, of course, you know, a growing trend in general of, of, of transgenderism. So... Let's tackle the numbers. We can see that the referral rate um, uh, is uh, 4,000. Sorry, the total referrals is 4,650. So we find our referral rate by taking 
our specific data number and dividing it by the total population and then multiplying that by 1000. So the referral rate per 1000 people is 0 0.843. Uh, or as a percentage of the populace, we are at 0.084%, so 0.08% of the population. Next, we have the surgery rate, which was a little bit more involved, and I've had to, <coughs> um, I guess, massage the data somewhat and make some educated guesses, but I've always uh, tried to lean on the side of assuming more than is probably true. So let me explain here. The first number is the total surgeries, and this is the amount of surgeries reported from 2017 and onwards. There were no reported surgeries from this report uh, before that. Um, but the total there was 1,225. Uh, but some reports mentioned surgeries done by gynecologists, which could involve, involve stuff like uh, hysterectomies, etc. Uh, some of the reports did not include these numbers, but they decided to claim that this was outside the department's jurisdiction. Uh, but these sur surgeries supposedly does happen because of referrals through this department. So I've decided to sort of build a stronger case here and include the gynecologist as a, at least if nothing else, a percentage representation. So for the years I did have data, I figured out what amount of, what percentage of, uh, of, um, uh, surgeries would be uh, gyne uh, referred to gynecologists, and I, I figured that the average there is 27%. So <coughs> adding the 27% to our uh, total surgeries, we end up with 1,555. So this number is larger than just adding the two together by, by doing, you know, 1,225 plus 214. Uh, but again, I want to err on the side of heavy-handedness and, and as academic de agent did he, he highballed some of these numbers in order to build a bit of a stronger case uh, for the actual number of transgenders in the country another argument that is brought up often is that many choose to do surgeries privately and there are no real statistics for this uh, I heavily doubt that uh, I'm not sure how the UK works but there's quite it's quite difficult to do this in Norway without going through this department first. Um, and considering the expense as well, it's even more expensive here than it would be uh, anywhere else, I think. Um, so I doubt this happens very often, but I'm going to do what Academic Agent did, and I'm going to add a fictitious number that represents the number of private surgeries, and I'm going to base that on the hard data I do have, which is the, the data of, you know, uh, the amount of surgeries per year. <clears throat> uh, so I uh, used the median surgeries for all years, uh, and uh, which was 281 surgeries a year. And I simply assumed that that median would count for every year. Uh, we had data, which is from 2017 onwards, which is not true. You know, the first year it was like 100 people, right? Uh, but again, I'm just going to be very heavy handed here. Uh, so this results in 1,683 private surgeries. Fictitious. <clears throat> and then uh, we end up with our data for the surgery rate. So adding the total surgeries and the fictitious surgeries together, we have 3,283 divided by the population times 1,000. We get 0 0.587. Or as a percentage of the population, 0.059% of the population. Again, this is most likely a heavily inflated number because of my interference and the fake private surgeries data that I inserted. The last one is actually quite simple. Uh, it's one of the few points we do have good statistical data and you have the, the tax man to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to blame for that one uh, because the tax offices do need your legal gender and if you change them, they will know. If you change your legal gender, they will know about it, and they publish statistics on this. And so, I think going back to 2016, uh, they report a total of 2,005 people who have changed their legal gender. So that's just above 2,000 people who have ever changed their gender legally. So there could be that doing this is a difficult process, that it takes time, that the state doesn't really want to do this for people. 
Uh, I don't know. But the point is that uh, uh, there are only 2,000 people who have actually gone through with this. So then we have our certificate rate, which is 2,005 people divided by the total population times 1,000. And we have a rate of 0 0.364, with a percentage being 0 0.03. And so it's all about just getting to the results and adding up all of these numbers. So here we have the 0 0.843 plus 0 0.587 plus 0 0.364 that shakes down to a real trans rate of 0 0.18 per 1000, or if you will, 0 0.02 of the total population percentage. And again, as Academic Agent concludes in uh, his video, keep this number in mind whenever you encounter anything in the media or politics about transgenderism. Uh, this is massively overrepresented. Uh, if the real trans percentage is somewhere along 0.02% of the population. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to tune into our show, The Longhouse, every Thursday evening. And uh, I'll see you next time.